friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Yvonne and you are on Ginger Chick Rehab, where I love to take secondhand finds and make them over for you all and share the process with what I do to each and every one of the items. So yes, to start right off, I have, I think they used to be like shakers for bulbs or some type of farming, gardening, but I love the age of the screen. I love the age of the wood. I love like this one that has the tacks. I just love everything about, I'm going to call shakers. So my favorite thing to do with these shakers is put a wreath in them. And I like to make my own wreaths. I can't help but pick up when people have free hymnal pages or old hymnal books or any kind of music books like that, that they are one step from going to the landfill and I pick them up to be able to reuse those beautiful music sheet papers. These are just some loose sheets. They must have went into a binder. Somebody had punched holes in them. So I'm going to go ahead and go through and cut out all of, cut off all the holes. That's going to take me a little bit of a time because I need a lot of these papers. So, but just to show the quick version of it is then I fold them in half and then I cut it down in half. So you could do it with the scissors or you could do it like I am with the cutting machine. Just something to get them to start off with by cutting them in half. So now that I have a whole stack cut in half and my hot glue gun is ready, I'm going to go ahead and fold these in half. And I'm just using, you can use a pencil, you can use any kind of poking tool. I just have, happen to have a paintbrush that I'm using. So I just like wad it up like I'm going to throw it away in a ball over that paintbrush end. And then I just poke it. And you can kind of poke it into that styrofoam because that glue is hot so that'll melt it just a little bit and then you just kind of have to hold it there for a few seconds until it sets up. Now the spacing's personal choice. I just butt it up so the tops are touching each other. You'll see a space in between. That's perfectly fine because you're going to be layering this up. And so the next row will start where the hole um, between the two are. So you just keep working all the way around. That first layer really will take you the longest because that's the one you kind of have to hold until it dries. But the next layers luckily will kind of rest on top so you don't have to hold it quite so long until that hot glue dries. Well, not necessarily dries, but cools off enough that it won't just slide down. So now on the next layer, we go in between the gaps of the two bottom layer one. Um, that'll help. As I said, you won't have to hold it quite as long because those bottom layers are dry and it's holding it up for you. And then the process will go much faster. And as you can see, yep, it does go much faster, <laughs> especially with the power of editing. And now what we're doing is I'm going to cut one of the half sheets in half. So I'm going to be using a quarter. So you don't have to use that. will just, you know, keep those sides full. And then we're starting to fill in the middle section. So I did wash my box a few days ago, so I had plenty of time to dry, so we weren't getting my piper wet. But look at that fit. Oh, what a statement piece this makes on a wall, sitting on a shelf. But I'm going to go ahead and add some wire. Now, I should have added the wire before um, 
sometimes you just get going on a project and you're like, oh yeah, I should have added the wire to the form before. So now I'm just going to take some wire and then weave it through that paper. Like I said, it would have been easier to do beforehand, but you know, hey, it, all, it happens. So I'm just going to pull apart um, or push apart some of the paper so that I can wire this on. And I'm going to do the top and the bottom sections so that it does not just flop around. And when I cut the wire off, I'm actually going to take needle nose top pliers and make sure that I bend those ends in back in towards after I twisted them nice and tight so they don't scratch up somebody's wall. And I will just add a middle hanging system, just something simple to hold this up. Luckily, these boxes are not very heavy. The wreath is not very heavy at all. It's just nice and lightweight. So what do you think of these? There's so much potential. They have that industrial vibe. I'm almost wondering if like they were somebody's um, shop project at school or a 4-H project. I mean, they're just they're they're there. They're there. They just it just needs to be made over so it really has that industrial vibe. I love the cage. I love the Edison bulb. Uh, I love the piping. Oh my goodness. Um, but not so much the colors. Um, the piece of wood could use some help. So let's see how we can make this over. I know I'm going to be spray painting them, but you want to stuff in, cover up anything that's electrical, like where the bulb goes. So I'm actually just taking a piece of tissue paper, Kleenex, and just stuffing it in there. I thought I was going to need some tape, but it looks like it's a nice tight fit that I don't need to go any farther. So first thought is like to take it off the piece of wood to save the piece of wood, but it's nice to have this heavy metal it's nice heavy piping um to be able to stand up to paint it so i'm going to take the time to tape off that wood because i want to still keep that wood look and then after i get it like taped off i'll take an exacto knife go around the base but i want to make sure that i have all the corners taped off including the cord i want to make sure that i get that taped off put it in a bag so I can protect it. Spray paint, paint, you know, will go all over and it's hard to get off once you got it on. And I like the knob color. I like that red color. So it's just bolted in. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off and paint that, age it separately, um, but I don't want to spray paint it. To really give them the industrial vibe, I'm going to be using Rust-Oleum's enamel spray paint um, in the flat matte black. And that's really, oh, look at how quickly these just turned industrial. I could leave this as is. I could put it back together. But let's add some patina to each one of these joints. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Not a ton. So I have some of the Dixie Bell iron paint that I'm going to be using. And I said like just at the joints. Just a little bit of age to these. 
And I don't want to forget the other pieces and parts to make it all look like it has um, just aged over time. The cage, the little knob, yes, just adding it where just here and there where the joints are. So now we're going to go ahead and spray them. So I have the green patina spray at first, which is going to make a rust color. And then after I get that all sprayed off, and it'll change a little bit here and there where even where the patina paint isn't. That's the fun about these patinas. And then I'll wait like 15 minutes. It seems like I get best results if I wait like 15 minutes and then add the blue patina spray on the top of them. And that'll give you that turquoisey um, color, just a little bit more pop of color than just the brown rust. So now that it is dry, it is set up, I'm going to go ahead and add some Weather Defense Metal Spray to seal it in. And to add some age to the base, this is really simple. Just Jolie's Black Wax. I, oh, I'm i obsessed with this stuff. So I, all I'm going to do is take a brush, um, go along the edges of the block of wood, and then just blend it up. That'll just give it the age look to tie in with the black that we painted this piece. So in my next makeover, I'm probably sure that most people would have just thrown in the trash. And I cannot believe I paid money for it at a garage sale. Yep, it has holes. <laughs> it has holes. It was in the garden. I got to shake all the dirt and crud out. <laughs> Try to get as much, most of it out as I can. Yep. So do you really think I can transform this piece into something beautiful? I do. I think I can. Even with the hole. Are you all intimidated by the hole? I am not. Ever since I fixed that fake rock on that snail, I'm like, hey, I just need some spray foam and then I can fill this hole right in and make it a solid surface. So that's what I'm doing. The sad thing about it is that unfortunately the spray foam is a one-time use. <laughs> it's a one-time use because so you have to think, do I have many projects that I can use this spray foam on? Because once you've used it, it does, I mean, I tried all the tricks of the trade trying to save a bottle of spray foam and it yeah yep it's just all used up but this there's quite a bit that I need to use in these two to make them beautiful again so and I do find out like once you've topped it off it just grows out as it's setting up drying out but that's okay because it easily chips away hard part one, this is drying is not to touch it because it is super sticky, y'all. But really, it will chip away. I can take an X-Acto knife. I can cut it to form. Um, don't stress that you have this big bubble on the side because if you touch it, you're going to need some like rubbing alcohol or something to get it off your hands. Lesson learned. I've been there, done that. But really, it'll just easily just chip right off. And this was probably set up for a couple hours until it was completely dry that I could be able to touch it and remove it.
Now that I have it cut away, I need to harden it. So what I'm using now is some Starbond CA glue. I'm just putting it all over where the spray foam on, running a little bit so it blends onto the item itself. And then I'll spray the accelerator and in 15 seconds it'll dry and it'll be nice and hard just like the exterior of the rest of the item. But one thing I did not do is I did not clean these before I used the spray foam. I did not want water getting trapped inside so now i can go ahead that i have that hole those holes sealed off and get these wiped out there's a lot of staining going on here i'm just going to try to do the best that i can to get it wiped down before I paint these paint these, I want to get them primed. <laughs> and funny story here is the lid on this can was gray. And I can really see that it has a silvery mirror effect going on. But it doesn't matter. I just need something to be a primer on it. So the, either the lid got switched or I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I just needed a primer. So now I'm going to be using Fusion's Little Lamb. Little Lamb, don't you love that name? Um, an all-in-one primer paint and top coat to cover these up. So it's going to take two coats, but I want that kind of a cement look going on. And I think Little Lamb will achieve that perfectly. And yes, the Fusion had the primer in it, but I just wanted to really start off with a good base since I could not get all the dirt and in all those little crevices with a different type of primer underneath. excited about my next process because I hope the vision in my head turns out the way that I want it to. So I'm going to be using some patinas on here, but this time I'm going to mix the copper and the iron patina paint together, layering one on top of the other. So I'm going to put some of the rust, the iron on the bottom, get that on, and then layer on top of that, right on top of it. It's not even going to be dry. I'm going to use some of the copper patina, and I'm kind of going to have it trundling down like it is aged it's been aged it's been weathered it's been rained on it's been wet so let's see if i can achieve this My patina paint is still wet. I'm going right on top of it. I'm going to go ahead and use the green patina spray first. I'm going to start at the top, let it run down. I think it's just going to give it that wonderful aged bed in the garden look. And then on top of the green, I'm going to wait about 15 minutes. I find that if I let that green start to activate, start to do what it needs to do, and then add the blue patina paint, um, I really get those two variants of colors. have all dried I'm going to get this sealed in with some weather defense oh don't you just love those colors and this is really going to bring out the colors and really blend them by putting a top coat on top of it
So my last makeover for the video is going to be this little cubby box. When I saw this at Goodwill, I was like, well, that's a project piece if I have ever seen one. Now let's start the prep. So we're going to go ahead and remove any of the tags. And this was double tagged in case we were going to miss the price tag. And then it has the maker's tag on the bottom that, of course, was a little bit on the sticky side and didn't want to come off. So I'm just going to use a little bit of lemon oil, let that sit for a couple minutes while I get the drawers out, and then I should be able to easily remove it. I'm assuming since these have no hardware and they have extra holes on it, this was somebody's project piece to begin with. So I'm going to start off with by taking some wood filler and filling in those holes. Now this is like a very light balsam wood type of material, not MDF board, not hardwood. So it's definitely, as you saw the tag on the bottom, the Midwest piece. I'm not sure who sells the Midwest. I know that. I see that a lot on ornaments. But yes, so it was definitely a store-bought piece that I am excited to make over. And I hope, like this, like the other ones, I hope that my vision in my head can come through on my project. My wood filler is dry. I can go back in and I can get it nice and smooth by sanding it. And I'm just using a 150 grit to sand that. I don't want to use a heavier grit because that might take too much of the material down. And like I said, this is a really light wood. And I find the easiest way to paint these cubbies is spray paint. So I'm just going back to use that Rust-Oleum's enamel wear. It's a flat mat. See, it just gets in those crevices so much easy without having to try to brush and hit all those angles and not get paint pooling up. Now that I have all the areas painted as the best as I can, it's just some of those are weird the way that it takes paint. I'm actually just going to go in and I'm going to distress this. So just using some 220 sandpaper, I'm not trying to remove a ton of the paint. I just want to go in and distress those edges. It's kind of a raw texture of, of wood, so that'll really tie in by distressing these pieces. Here's where the fun begins. <laughs> so you think I got nine drawers. I put nine drawers back into nine cubbies. It's a mass produced. They will all fit perfectly. No, nope, 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 nope. That was not, not the case. So I had to play around, figure out which cubby went or which drawer went into which cubby. And I ended up having to sand some of them a little bit on the sides to get them to fit. And maybe that's why um, I had some difficulty when I was getting them out. But I just thought that they had them in the wrong, you know, space. So as you see, yeah, no, they didn't, they don't all fit. But that was my fix is that on the sides, I maybe it got wet, it swelled. Maybe they were tight to begin with, but yes, I felt like it was one of those child game where I'm trying to fit a square peg into a round hole and it does not fit. And like a children's game, I have a sander to make them fit. So now I have them, they all fit. Yes, they all slide in and out properly. There was just two I had to sand the sides off. So now I'm going to be using some library poles on these. I... I already love it in black. I love the way that the wood has popped. Oh, it's just gorgeous. So, but before putting the library poles on, I'm going to be using some antiquing wax to use as a top coat. It's going to rich in that black and it's going to pop and make that wood that's popped from underneath just look amazing. 
So now I move on to the library poles. Now the difficulty is trying to make them so they're even. So this is my guide. I've got two rulers, one from the top of the drawer. It may look like it's the top, but I'm actually using the top of the drawer and I have the drawers pushed down. And then one from the bottom of the drawer. So it's not completely like in the center per se, as at least they're all going to be straight across and level. Now I'm gonna have to pre-drill the holes. They're just little bitty screws that come with that and they don't. they just really won't bite into the wood. So I have to do a little um, drill bit just to pre-drill them. Then when it comes to going down, I kind of do the same thing. I get my ruler where I need my ruler to be. I'll place the ruler up and down so that all of that hardware is going. It's a little bit of, you know, it's a little work, but it's well worth it to have them be as level as you possibly can get it. I'm sure there's one or two off. It's that perfectly imperfect, but at least they're not all wonky. So thank you so much for watching today's video. And yes, I sometimes just cannot pass up items when I see them out and about, and I just can envision them having new life, giving them a makeover, saving them from the landfill. So give me a quick comment down below, which of the items I made over today were your favorites. Thank you so much for watching guys, and we will see you next time and you can see what we're up to. Bye.